I'm Dr. Jim Taylor, and welcome to Prime Family Alert. This segment of Prime Family Alert focuses on perfectionism. Perfectionism is one of the most destructive diseases among children today. Perfectionism, though, is a double-edged sword. One edge of the sword drives children maniacally to be perfect. These children push themselves to get straight A's, be top athletes, and save the world on weekends. But the other, other edge of the sword is that I've never met a happy perfectionist. How can they be happy when they're never perfect? Perfectionism involves children setting unrealistically high standards for themselves and striving for a goal that they will never ever, let me emphasize this point, ever achieve. Yet they believe that anything less than perfection is unacceptable. When they fail to meet those impossibly high standards, they break themselves unmercifully. Perfectionistic children are never satisfied with their efforts, no matter how objectively well they perform, and they punish themselves for not being perfect. Not long ago, I spoke to a group of high school students, and a girl from the audience described to me how she'd gotten a 100 on a recent test that also offered 10 extra credit points. She got 7 of the 10 extra credit points for a total of 107 out of 100, yet missing those 3 extra credit points had been eating at her ever since. At the heart of perfectionism is a threat. If children aren't perfect, their parents won't love them. This threat arises because children connect whether they're perfect with their self-esteem. Being perfect dictates whether they see themselves as valuable people worthy of love and respect. The price these children believe they will pay if they're not perfect is immense, and its toll can be truly destructive. Depression, anxiety, eating disorders, substance abuse, and suicide. By the way, children don't have to be perfectionistic in every part of their lives to be considered perfectionists. They only have to be perfect in areas that they care about. For example, there are perfectionists in school who have very messy rooms, or perfectionistic athletes who don't care at all about their schoolwork. Unfortunately, we live in a culture that reveres perfection. Our culture has elevated success to absurd heights where being good is no longer good enough. Now children have to aim for the Ivy Leagues or pros, or they're considered failures. They have to make lots of money and have the perfect house and the perfect car. Our culture also worships at the altar of physical perfection. Children are bombarded by images of perfect people with perfect bodies, perfect faces, perfect hair, and perfect teeth, as evidenced by the popularity of cosmetic surgery and reality TV shows where everybody seems to be beautiful or handsome. Though it appears that perfectionistic children are driven to succeed, their singular motivation in life is actually to avoid failure, because they connect failure with feelings of worthlessness and loss of love. Perfectionistic children view failure as a voracious beast that stalks them every moment of every day. If these children stop for even a moment's rest, they believe they'll be devoured by failure, and that's simply unacceptable. Though perfectionists often achieve some degree of success, because of this profound fear of failure, these children often don't fully realize their ability and achieve true success. The, the reality is that the only way to attain true success is to risk failure and perfectionistic children are often unwilling to take those risks. Though the chances of success increase when they take risks, unfortunately the chances of failure also increase. So perfectionistic children hover in what I call a safety zone, in which they remain our safe distance from failure, so nobody can accuse them of being failures, and they can still feel good about themselves. But they're also stuck at a frustrating distance from success. You also might think that perfectionistic children experience excitement and elation when they achieve their high standards. But those emotions are far too normal for them. The strongest emotion perfectionistic children can muster after they succeed is often just relief. Where does this relief come from? That they've dodged another bullet of failure and can still feel good about themselves. But not for long. Recently, I asked a group of students how long they thought the relief lasts. And a girl threw up her hand and declared, till the next exam! Now, what emotion do perfectionistic children feel when they fail to meet those high standards? You might think disappointment, but disappointment is far too normal an emotion for perfectionistic children. Perfectionistic children experience devastation because they perceive the failure as a personal attack on their value as people. After almost every parent talk I've given, a parent says to me, I swear that my child was born a perfectionist. But there is no scientific evidence that perfectionism is inborn. The research indicates that children learn their perfectionism from their parents, most often the same-sex parent. Through their words, emotions, and actions, children connect being loved with being perfect. 
Now, this doesn't mean that there are no inborn influences. Some genetic attributes, such as, for example, a temperament, may make children more vulnerable to perfectionism. Parents pass on perfectionism to their children in three ways. Some perfectionistic parents raise their children to be perfectionists by actively praising and rewarding success and punishing failure. These parents offer or withdraw their love based on whether their children meet their perfectionistic expectations. When children succeed, their parents lavish them with love and attention and gifts. But when they fail, their parents either withdraw their love and become cold and distant, or express strong anger and resentment for their children for not being perfect. In both cases, these children get the message that if they want their parents' love, they must be perfect. Thankfully, in my over 25 years of practice, I've only come across a few of these parents who were this overtly perfectionistic. And by the way, I will say that they were also mentally ill. Other parents unintentionally role model perfectionism for their children. Examples of how perfectionism is communicated by parents include having to have themselves and their home look a certain way, their career efforts, their competitiveness in sports and games, and how they respond when things don't go their way. Children see how their parents hate themselves when they're not perfect, so they feel they must be perfect so their parents won't hate them. These parents unwittingly communicate to their children that anything less than perfection won't be tolerated in the family. The final type of parents that convey perfectionism are not perfectionists at all. In fact, they're the antithesis of being perfect. But by gosh, they're going to make sure that their kids are perfect. These parents project their flaws onto their children and try to fix those flaws by giving love when their children don't show those flaws and withdrawing love when they do. Unfortunately, instead of creating perfect children and absolving themselves of their own imperfections, they pass these flaws on to their children and so they, and they stay flawed themselves. Here's my antidote for perfectionism. You should remove the word perfection from your vocabulary. It so serves no purpose at all other than to make your children miserable. You should replace perfection with excellence. I define excellence as doing good most of the time. I use poor grammar intentionally there because that's how most kids talk and also I'm not perfect either. Excellence takes all the good aspects of perfection. For example, achievement, high standards, disappointment with failure, and leaves out the unhealthy parts. For example, connecting achievement with self-esteem, unrealistic expectations, and fear of failure. Also, excellence still sets the bar very high. It's not average, above average, or even very good. It's excellent, but it never connects failure with the love you give your children or the love they give themselves. Excellence actually encourages your children to fail, not repeatedly on the same thing to, 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 due to a lack of effort, mind you, because it understands that without some failure, true success is impossible. Without a fear, of fa a fear of failure, your children can turn their gaze towards success and pursue it with commitment and gusto, knowing that you'll, you'll love them no matter what. There's even a book titled Perfect Parenting. What an impossible standard for parents to live up to. But here's some news that should bring you some relief. You don't have to be a perfect parent, just an excellent one. I can hear a collective parental sigh of relief across America now. Being an excellent parent means doing good most of the time with your children. You can actually make mistakes with your children. You can occasionally lose your temper or act like a soccer or a stage or a helicopter parent. So cut yourself some slack about being a perfect parent. Make sure that you and your children do good most of the time and you'll be a whole lot less stressed and they will turn out to be most excellent children. I'm Dr. Jim Taylor for Prime Family Alert.